Hey there, it's Doodlebud back again today. I'm going to be listing off my top pins in the $50 to $100 range. And at the end, I'm going to tell you which one I think is the best bang for the buck. Which one is it going to be? Stay tuned and let's find out. For a lot of folks, these are the usual suspects when it gets into starting with fountain pens. You got the Twisby Eco Pilot Metropolitan Lamy Safari and a Caveco Sport. All of them are great pens. I definitely recommend them. But maybe you're playing with them and go, these are nice. I'd like to spend a little bit more, but keep it under the $100 range. So that's where that $50 to $100 price point comes in. So let's check out some options for your next pens. I'm not going in any particular best to worst option, but I figure I'll just start with the alternative to the Lamy Safari. A lot of people start with this pen, super famous. So you think, I really like this. I'd like to get maybe a nicer version. That's where the Lamy LX steps in. So you can see this is a metal pen, aluminum versus uh, a plastic version. It's just much more premium. There is the All-Star. Now this is like sub $50. And again, prices, this is a little bit tricky because depending where you are, depending what current prices are, exchange rates, this could be different. I'm just going to use US prices for now, even though I'm in Canada. The LX is a step up further than the All-Star. There's just some nicer finishes. You can tell by the end finials, instead of plastic, we have metal. And then we just got some premium finishes as well in here. We got this beautiful kind of rose gold like trim here on the pen as well. Still has your lovely snap cap action. We have a smoked uh, section and you get that black nib. Just gives a really, really sharp appearance. I've never been a massive fan of the Safari. Nothing wrong with the pen, but this LX, wow, this really sets it off. This thing just really looks classy, has that same overall look, posts all those great features. This thing has never dried on, out on me at all. Just performs extremely well. But uh, if you want to stick to that Safari look, you're happy with it. You like the, the grip. Some people don't like the grip. I have no problems. Uh, I find it fits my hand quite well. The Lamy LX is definitely a pen you should check out. Another one I don't have, I'll just mention, I'll throw up a picture on there, is the Lamy Studio. I've heard fantastic things. I've used one before, tried it out. It just didn't do it for me. But again, beautiful pen, great construction. The uh, Just to give you ideas for price points, the LX, the standard price on this is $70. You can find them on sale commonly for about $56. So we're just over that $50 price range. Um, and then there's the Studio, normally about $89. That goes for about $72. There's a Special Editions. There's one that has the same beautiful color as well, which is really sharp looking. That's about $79, depending on where you're looking. Now, for all the Pilot Metropolitan lovers, you might want to check out the Pilot Prera. This is a nice little compact offering, so it is smaller, but of course, it posts on there quite nicely, and you have a full-size pen. So even someone for me who has a fairly large hand, this is quite comfortable. I do prefer this over the Caveco Sport. That one's just a bit too small. This is a little bit better size for me. It uh, takes the same nib, so if you have a nib on here, and you want to swap them around you can do that as well the slip cap on here is just perfect it's just so satisfying that snap that snip sound works extremely well also it seals the pen really well as well i've never had it hard start or dry out on me there's lots of little color options you can get cartridge converter takes the pilot cartridges and converter just like on the uh, metropolitan as well this has the con 40 you can't fit a con 70 in there just in case you're wondering but this is a great pen like I said, nice and portable pocket pen or purse pen, slip it on a notebook, portable and reliable, just like all other Pilot pens are. Keeping with the theme of alternates to the classic starter pens, here we got the Caveco Sport. You can get this in aluminum. That's the All Sport. I don't have one to show you. I've heard fantastic thing about that pen. Lots of color options, which are really great. So definitely check one of those out. But uh, one I think that gets missed quite a bit is the Caveco Student. I think it has to do with the name. People might associate Student with like a, a you know El Cheapo pen. This is not an El Cheapo pen. It's it's made very very well. Very happy with the quality they have some cool color options so this is what i call from the decades series this is the 1920s they have like 30s and 50s and 60s and so on um, this pen really has a classic timeless design i think it's a good bridging pen where if you are a vintage fanatic this is a, a way in to get sort of a modern pen uh, but still had that vintage look. Or if you're a modern pen person, don't like vintage, this sort of has that vintage look. One turn to pop it off, which is quite nice. Uh, for 
For many people, this would be long enough. I prefer it posted. It posts securely, doesn't back weight the pen, and it feels really, really nice in the hand. The nibs are the same size as on the regular sports and the all sports as well. So if you got some nibs, you can swap them around, which is really cool. We have a metal section. I don't find this really slick. Uh, it has a nice contour, so I don't find my hand uh, slipping off or having any problems at all. Cartridge converter takes a full-size converter. You don't have to worry about the mini one like on here. You get the full size, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah, overall quality, it's just a really, really well-built pen. So check one of these out. I think they look great. It's performed wonderfully for, for me as well. Price point on this one usually range about $60 to $70. Uh, so a little bit cheaper than if you go for the all sport. Again, I'm pretending this is an all sport. Those usually go for about 80 to 92. If you like your Twisby Eco and love the brand, they have lots of options to cover you as well. Again, I don't have all of the pens, so there's definitely ones I'm going to miss. I can only speak of ones that I have. But here we have the VAC, the 700R. This is in the iris finish as well. So this is the vacuum filler, which is really, really cool. Another alternative, uh, again, I'll show it on the screen. They have the 580. There's the diamond 580, then there's the 580 with aluminum, and then they have a 580 with the iris finish as well. <laughs> so they got lots of options. They're really, really well made. For this price point, they do extremely well. Uh, what's nice with this one is, so you got an O-ring here for sealing. So I haven't had any issues with this uh, drying out for traveling. This would be good as well. You got the vac filler, so you have the shut off valve and they're just also really fun to fill up. I mean, you just pull the plunger back Boom, presto, it fills up. And uh, you know what? Let's fill it up. I got this uh, cool Lamy pink ink. This was in the discount as well. I got an order. I think it was six bucks for this bottle. But all you do, you unscrew, pull the plunger back, pop it in, submerge it in the ink, press it down, and boom, away you go. Now, I'm not going to get in the whole thing on how to get an absolute full fill in this. Uh, you can do that. But it's really beautiful for display purposes with seeing the ink, seeing your ink level. And uh, yeah. Really good little pen. For me, I haven't really resonated with it for whatever reason. It performs great. It feels good. All those sort of things. Um, I I got nothing against the pen other than I just don't use it a ton for whatever one reason or another. But the uh, the VAC 700 series of pens, the 580s are really, really good. The uh, This one here, this lists for about $80. The regular version lists for about $65. Then you got the 580 version. The, the base one is 50 bucks. And then all the way up again to about eighty dollars, depending on what you're spending. So for fifty to eighty-ish dollars, you got a really great quality pen. The nice thing with this, you have a number six nib. The standard Eco is smaller; it's a number five. Here you have the number six. You can get these cool trims like on this, as you see. Great options if you are a Twisby Eco fan. Now, if you like your Twisby pens, chances are you might go for a Narwhal pen. They're also they changed their name instead of Narwhal. Now it's Navalure. I still don't know how to pronounce it. But when I got mine, this was a Narwhal pen. Now, they've had their uh, differences. They've sort of been resolved, I guess. Um, I didn't get too much into that. I just treat them as, as what they are. The Narwhals, Narvalure, are very, very well-built pens. I think they, they really do compete with Twisby in that price point. This is a special edition. I got this one from Gold Spot. This was a Peter Draws. Peter Draws seems to do a, a special edition with them each year. They're a great pen. This is the piston uh, filler version. They just came out with a brand new uh, vac filler, but the piston mechanism is quite nice. This is what they got in the dispute over. Um, but overall, the build quality is great. It fits nicely in the hand, and I really enjoy it. I haven't had any problems with dry out. Uh, it performs quite well. One thing I found is the nib sizes. Apparently, this has been fixed, but this is a fine. It, it does seem to write a little bit wider. Let me know in the comments, maybe, if you found the newer ones are a little bit more in alignment. They seem to write about one size above what the normal, you know, nib width nib width, I should say, would be. But great construction, great pen. I really love the looks. I love the balance. They got some options that are, of course, over this price point. But uh, these pens, this one here, this I think was a special edition. So I think it's somewhere in that $60 to $70 range. But the regular version, the classic and their standard colors is like 50 bucks. And if you want to go for the vac filler, it's only 55 so if you've been checking out fountain pens, these probably don't really surprise you. These are fairly common, fairly mainstream. Now I'm going to show a few that maybe don't get talked about as much. The very first one I'm going to chat about 
is this the brand overall are Ranga pants. Now they have tons of different models, tons of different options as well. And my focus is terrible. There we go. This is the model 9B. There's lots of different model numbers and lots of different finishes as far as materials go. This is their premium ebonite. They have a, a kind of a basic ebonite. They also have acrylics and tons of model options. I get a little confused with all the numbers, but these are built quite nice. The price ranges are quite broad from about 55 bucks up to about, I think $90 or so. This is the premium ebonite. You can see you can't even see the seam because it's it's done extremely well. This is less than one turn to pop off, like three quarter turn, which is quite nice. It's a large size pen. This, I don't think this posts. Yeah, not really, but you don't need to because it's a very, very large pen. So if you like big pens, they have, they have you covered. They have some smaller ones as well. Um, cartridge converter pen, you can even eyedropper this. These are all handmade. Um, with this one too, I picked up a couple extra nibs. You got Yovo options, you got Bach, you got Schmidt, all sorts of nib options, which is really great. I picked up a few extra nibs, uh, like a big pen like this. I ended up grinding mine. So right now I have a, a broad nib, a Schmidt broad nib, and I ground it to an oblique broad. So that's kind of fun. So this writes very, very well. The Ebonite is a nice feel. If you've never had an Ebonite pen, this would be a great option uh, to get into that as well at some pretty attractive price points. I really like the looks of them. I like the feel of them. They perform quite well. Here is another one just to give you a little comparison. I think this is the Model 8. This was even cheaper. This was around that 50-ish dollar price point. And you can just see uh, this is the premium Ebonite. This is sort of the basic one. You save a few dollars. Here you spend a few more, but you get a little bit more as well. Threads aren't quite as nice, not as many. Uh, you know, you got to do more revolutions to uncap it. So lots of options with Ranga. You should definitely check these out if you have it. Going along with a similar type of theme as these Ranga pens, because these are made in India, is another India-made pen and that comes from Fountain Pen Revolution. Now this one actually is under $50. This is the Himalaya. It's only like $35. If you spend an extra $14 to bring it to $49, you get the Ultra Flex nib. Now it has an ebonite feed, which is really good, but this Ultra Flex is fantastic, especially for this price point. Now to be in the video, we're going to talk over $50. So they have their Jaipur which is a piston filler version. The regular version is like 55. You add $14 for the Ultra Flex. Now we're talking 69 bucks. Now, if I were to get a fountain pen revolution pen, I probably wouldn't get one just for a regular nib. It's for me, it's really all about that Ultra Flex. Now I will show you a writing sample with this pen later on in the video, but it is extremely, extremely impressive. If you're looking for uh, a reasonably well-made pen that's cost efficient and you want tons of flex, you should definitely be checking out a fountain pen revolution pen. Now I do find the Ranga pens, they suit my hand better as far as size. And also I find the build quality is just a little bit better, but for this price point and getting that kind of flex, it's tough to beat these. And again, a little bit on that theme is this offering from Osprey pens. This is the Milano. This is in their red Jasper acrylic. They also have ebonites, which are absolutely gorgeous. I find these are really, really lovely pens. And what's really cool about these um, is with this, with their pens, you can also get multiple nibs. So one pen, many nibs. I've talked about this before. So these are built, the build quality on these is quite nice. The regular section does match, but what you can do is you can add on some other sections. And that's the one, what I'm going to show you here. So this takes their 5.5 uh, medium flex nib. You can also fit it with a Zebra G as well. They get some super duper flex. Now, the cool thing with these, the base pen as it is, if you just get it with a regular nib runs $70. But then if you add on, you can get one pen, just get whatever nib point you want, add on an additional nib. And there's lots of flex options. You know, one of these here, an ultra flex style nib, very similar to this. And they also have their Zebra G and a Foss Bronze one. Tons, tons and tons of nibs options, which are really cool. And they have other ones on their site. I think there's like a zoom nib and music nibs and architects, all that kind of stuff. You can really go bonkers on these. But uh, instead of spending 70, if you spend 18, you can get one pen and have a flex nib option. And it comes with the whole section and converter. So you can just swap, hot swap it right in and out. Not have to worry about getting ink all over your hands and swapping nibs and all that. It's just the section with the with the converter and away you go. You turn it from a regular pen into a flex pen and uh, you can't really go wrong with these. So, and another cool thing, so that's the regular price. If you use the code, the doodle bud, you save an extra 10%. So we're coming down even lower on that. So 
I, you know, these are great pens. I think the build quality is pretty darn good. And the one pen many nibs option, you know, I'm a big fan of that. So I'm definitely going to recommend these. So we're just cooking along, going through lots of pens. Here's another one. This comes from Namasu. This is the Namasu Horizon. They have several different pens. Uh, they're all metal body pens, so this is an aluminum pen, as you can see. And But the cool thing is they have a little extra weight down here at the end, so this is a steel section, stainless steel. So it kind of gives a nice weight to that pen as well. Um, when I first got the pen, again, I got reviews in all of these if you want to check them out. Mine was leaking really bad. Now, I can't really ding Namasu on that. What it turns out to be, it was a little micro crack on the nib housing unit. This is a Bach uh, nib housing they use. So there's a little tiny crack on there. I can't really ding them on that one. I've just swapped out the housing and I've had zero problems with the pen ever since. They're well-built cartridge converter pens. You know, you've seen all that kind of stuff. The, the overall build is pretty good. There's a few things I'd like to see a slight improvement on. Just how the converter fits. It could use a little bit of a tighter fit. Um, little tiny, you know nuances with the pen i'd like to see a slight improvement but they work extremely well i think the build is really good the one challenge with these is availability you can go to their site right now and you'll see lots of pen models and hopefully my camera will focus well, here we go um, it can be tough to get their pens. They'll have them, they go out of stock. It takes a little bit for them to come back. I got this one super deal. I know there's one on their site right now, like 40% off. I got this one 40% off. I think I only paid maybe 40 or $50 for this, but the regular price range when they're not on super sale is about 72 to 85. Definitely worth checking them out. The only challenge, like I said, is sometimes availability. The next one I'm showing you here, this comes from Enso Pens. This is their Pocket Puma. They have a bunch of other pens too. It kind of has the same issue with the Namasu as availability. If you go on their site right now, they do have some pens available, but they sort of come and go and it can be a while before they're restocked. Now, a lot of times their pens, it can be just under that $100 range, like $80 to $99. But a lot of them are done in Kickstarter. And if you, if you get on board, you can get them at a serious discount. I even got this titanium one. I think this was for like 69 or 70 bucks. Now it didn't have this finish. I did this myself, but their titanium pocket Puma for whatever it was, 69 or $70 grade five titanium is an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal deal. These pens I've hadn't had any problems with them at all. They function great. They never dry out on me. These are a cartridge only. They don't take a converter. It's too small. Same with this one here as well. Um, but yeah, they work exceptionally well. You get, they also have these other ones. This is the full size Puma. This is in the Ebonite. Again, it's a little bit tricky because it's hit and miss as far as availability. They do have it in aluminum. I think this goes for just under $100 as well. And then sometimes you can even catch one of these. Again, this is a custom anodized. This is the Italia in titanium. I did my own anodized job on that, but they've had copper ones and titanium ones. And again, if you catch them at the right time, you can get them for under a hundred bucks. So check out the Enso pens as well. I, I think they're absolutely fantastic. Like I said, the biggest knock with these is just availability. It's not there and it's, it's hit and miss. You can have just missed it and they sell out if you don't catch them at the right time. There's two pens left. They're kind of my top two in the under hundred dollar price range. But before I do those, a quick mention to vintage pens. You can get some phenomenal deals for that 50 to hundred dollar price point range. You can even get gold nibs. Like this one, for example, this is like a 1940s Esterbook uh, J series. It has a cool stock oblique broad nib on it. I picked it up for under 50 bucks, like $40, but it did need to have a new ink bladder and the little uh, filling mechanism that's in here had to get replaced as well. So maybe you gotta spend an extra 20 bucks in parts, but now you have this gorgeous vintage pen, works really great. Really cool as well. Here's a Parker 51. Now, if you get the ones with the gold nibs and the rolled gold cap, they, they cost more, but you can pick these up, you know, well under $100, no problem. This is the, the special alloy they have. This is a great pen. One of the most iconic fountain pens of all time. And you can even get gold ones that just need a little TLC. If you're willing to put that in, you'd be surprised at what you can get. And here is one that you can get with the gold nib. This one I got well under $100. This is a Schaefer Balance. Has a lovely gold nib. This even has a new sack on it. I'm going to be to uh, tweaking and tuning this one. Needs a little bit of work on the nib and it could use a little bit of TLC on the body. Just some finishing and polishing. But other than that, this is in phenomenal condition and you can get these for under a hundred bucks. So if you're willing to maybe put a little work into a pen, 
you can get some gorgeous pens under that $100 range. We have two pens left in the mix, and it's sort of a combo of these two pens, because I don't have the exact one, but I'll give you a hint. It's sort of an in-between. This is a Mahjong A1. This It's obviously a knockoff of the proper pilot vanishing point. This is a proper pilot vanishing point, but it has a gold nib. So this is way over the $100 price point, but there's a pen that's right between the two. It's an actual pilot. It's an actual vanishing point, but instead it has a steel nib. It's the alloy nib. And so it's the same really as a proper pilot vanishing point, but instead, just like this one has a steel nib, it has a steel nib as well. So, you know, if you want to get the proper brand, you can still get a pilot vanishing point for under a hundred bucks. And it's the alloy nib version. Those typically go for like a low $80, 81, 82, $85, somewhere in that range. And you're getting a proper pilot branded pen, all the same functionality really as a proper uh, 18 karat gold, you know, pilot vanishing point pen, all that great stuff. But if that's just too much for you to spend, these go for about a hundred and, I don't know, $56, somewhere in that range, depending where you buy it from. So we can get well below that $100 price point if you just go for the alloy nib version. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can check that out. And uh, yeah, you can get yourself a pilot vanishing point, same build quality and brand with sub $100 pricing. Now the final pen on the list, which I really, I would rank this as number one or number two behind the vanishing point, is a Gravitas entry. Now the reason for that is, one, these are phenomenally built. The attention to detail on any of the Gravitas pens are amazing, but the entry is the lowest price point. It's the entry level pen. It's in euros, but there's been some challenges with that currency going on and right now is a fantastic price like the us dollar is higher than the euro so this is like you know below 80 dollars for their entry pen and the build quality on these is phenomenal you get this is the uh, aluminum body so this is the lowest price point version but there are some other uh, options that are still at the hundred dollar or below range there is a stainless steel section, but it's got this black PVD coating and you can see the grip section on there. It's got these beautiful micro grooves in here. So if you have challenges with metal section pens and grip, you don't have that problem with the Gravitas pens. It's a cartridge converter pen. It's got a really, really nice converter that's on here. The threads on here are absolutely perfect. You can see how much I use it. Uh, and this pen, the way it's built, is phenomenal. There is just nothing that's missed or overlooked. I think for that fifty to hundred dollar uh, price point, this is really at the top of the heap. Even as far as sealing goes, you can't see the detail in here, but it meshes perfectly with the end of the section. I've never had this thing dry out once. It has started every single time. The posting is great, so if you like it on its own, no problem. You post it. It's a mega deep post, very secure. To just to give a little bit more length and it's just a perfectly fitting pen they of course have pens that are larger and more expensive but we're talking under the hundred dollar range so this one goes for 80 euros and then you can step it up just a few dollars more and you can get a full stainless steel one you can get copper you can get brass and you got all these different finishes so you can get the uh the super amazing skittles finish on this pen which looks absolutely mind-boggling i think the finish is the same price as their regular finish maybe it's a couple dollars more and then you can also get patterns that are laser ablated into there so i don't have the exact one but i have the paisley pattern in the century this is the brass but you can get this paisley pattern with a Skittles finish on this pan and it comes in right at that $100 price point or 100 euros, so just under 100 with current conversion. But again, that's a little bit of a challenge depending when you watch this video and what conversions are doing. But to be able to get this pen with a beautiful custom finish and this paisley pattern on there is crazy. And the thing that really seals the deal for me is every single pen is inspected as far as QC, but so is every single nib. Every nib that I've gotten, I've had, was it five pens now from Gravitas? Every one of them has performed perfectly. It's not even like off a touch. It is absolutely perfect. There's nothing worse than getting a pen and you ink it up, you're super excited, new pen day, and it's scratchy or it's hard starting, or it's drying out, or whatever the problem is. That does not happen with Gravitas. He, Ben Walsh, inspects every pen for the overall fit and finish. Now he's human, he might miss something, 
but it's going to be very rare. But then also he inspects every nib and he tweaks and tunes and smooths and adjusts them however they need to do his very best job to ensure you get the pan out of the box, out of the shipping material, you put ink in it and the puppy just writes and it's a super smooth pen. So it's pretty tough to beat out one of these. I don't know which one I would eke ahead. They're very neck and neck, but the fact that every pen in, and especially every nib is inspected and all the options you have from finishes, materials, patterns, and also nib, there's even a flex nib option he has on there as well, a fine flex. So extra fine all the way up to stubs and a fine flex all for under a hundred bucks. Yeah, you can see why uh, I'm super ecstatic about this pen. So yeah, that was a pretty extensive list. We covered everything from all these new pens to even some vintage pens. And look, I know fountain pen prices can just get absolutely out of control. But for 50 to 100 bucks, you can get a serious pen. Below 50 bucks, you can still get a great pen. But if you're willing to spend a few bucks, 50 to 100 dollars you can get some phenomenal pens very well built fantastic writers there are, are coarse pens i don't have that I, I i missed on here but uh you know these have all been pretty much trouble free okay i had a defective housing on that one that's really not their fault that that happens sometimes uh my caveco student has been perfect but i had a nib on a sport that needed serious tuning. So maybe you can get a nib like that on this. I don't know. Uh, one of my Bach nibs on my end. So I can't remember this one or a different one. It was almost quite right. I just needed a, a touch of a tuning. Uh, the nib slit was a bit too tight. But, you know, if you want to ensure you're not going to have a nib problem, psh, you cannot go wrong with the Gravitas pen. Now, I mentioned earlier about the Flex pens. Let me show you a writing sample. So I did this ahead of time just to save on time. This is a Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex pen. Lovely line variation, tons of flex, and this is the Osprey Milano. This isn't even their biggest flex pen uh, nib option. This is the 5.5 medium, so it writes a lovely medium line, but has some lovely flex to it as well. Like Just great for every day where you don't need mega, mega flex. Um, my personal choice between the two, just because it's a little bit bigger and the build quality is nicer, is the Osprey Milano. Nothing wrong with the Fountain Pen Revolution whatsoever. You can't go wrong with that, but I do. If I had to pick between the two, I'd pick this. And don't forget, use the Doodle Bud for 10% off so it gets the price points almost in line. But there you have it. So I, <laughs> if there's something I missed that you are screaming from the rooftops that I, I didn't talk about, throw that in the comments. We can chat down there and hit subscribe if you haven't. Come on, just be a, throw me a bone here. It helps the channel grow out and, and bring more content to you guys as well. We'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. And as always, we will catch you next time.